Yes, yes, and welcome back to the official Sourcing with Kian YouTube channel. Today I've got a very, very special episode for you guys. This is episode two from the series Straight from the Source in partnership with our friends at Helium 10. Today is a January 2021 update of everything we need to be uh, considering in supply chain. I'm not sure if you can guess from my dodgy drawings what we're going to be covering today, but there's going to be six main topics I'm going to go over in detail in terms of what we need to be aware of and what we need to do in order to make the most of our supply chain in January 2021. Let's go. So guys, first of all, Happy New Year. You're probably watching this at the start of the year, so hope you've all had a fantastic uh, start to the year. As mentioned, this episode is in partnership with Helium 10, where we're going to be bringing you every month your supply chain update in January, February, March, April, May, June, July. I'm going to cover everything that's going on and then actionable advice that we can apply to our business today in order to make the most of it. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Kian Gozari. I've been living and working in China for the past 12 years. In that time, I've manufactured over two and a half thousand products, visited more than 500 factories and attended more than 20 Canton fairs. That's led me to work with loads of different brands across the world, such as the Olympics, United Nations, uh, the NBA, as well as helping Amazon private labels sellers as well. Cool, cool. So normally we would start these episodes off with sort of uh, analyzing what was the summary of what happened last month. But if you watched episode one, we covered the, enchi- the entire 2021 supply chain summary. So if you haven't seen that episode, uh, definitely go back and check it out. I'm going to link it up above and in the description of this video below as well. So because of we covered of what happened in 2021, we're going to be going over everything we need to do in January to make the most of our supply chain situation. So let's start off. Number one, can you, get what, can you guess what this is? Well, apart from being a really, really bad drawing, this is a drawing of a tiger. And the reason I put a tiger on here is because February 1st is Chinese New Year. And Chinese New Year, this is going to be the year of the calendar. And if you're wondering why New Year falls on February 1st, sometimes it's the middle of February, sometimes the middle of January, uh, Chinese New Year follows the lunar calendar, which means the date changes every single year. Uh, and every 12 years they have a, an animal as well to represent that. So this year we're going to welcome in the year of the tiger. And the tiger represents uh, strength and braveness. So hopefully we can all uh, use that within our businesses as well. Uh, but just to give you a little bit of background of what goes on around Chinese New Year, uh, CCTV, which is the main news channel in China, uh, on January 31st, everyone will be watching that, sort of uh, watching the fireworks. There's going to be loads of firecrackers and stuff like that. Uh, I lived in Shanghai for several years and it was a re- really, really cool uh, thing to be a part of. Um, Chinese New Year is going to end around February 15th and that's what they call the Lantern Festival and that's to basically symbolize the end of the new year. So you can uh, anticipate your factories uh, being off work for a little bit longer than that two week period. Normally they'll take a break sort of one week or 10 days before uh, Chinese New Year. So about middle of January is when they're going to start a fall off of work. Uh, but the office staff will probably be off work for about seven to 10 days, something like that, uh, between that February uh, 1st to 15th. But they will be checking emails uh, as well, but just so you know, so you can plan around that. Okay, so now we've covered it's the year of the tiger and what are the dates, etc. Now let's cover like a few little fundamentals of what to be aware of uh, around this time of year. So with it being beginning of January and with the factors going off around middle of January, you've only got a really short window of time in terms of have you shipped everything out that you needed to ship before Chinese New Year. If there was something that you ordered several months ago and your factory guaranteed you that you'll get shipment before Chinese New Year, now is the time to check in with them to make sure are you definitely on schedule, are you definitely going to ship out before Chinese New Year. Uh, if not, let me know now. If we have any issues, let's resolve it. Um, if you need to arrange for any pre-shipment inspections, you want to book that in now. Just make sure nothing gets held up uh, around this time of year. As well as that, if they have given you a date, just make sure they're on schedule, ask for photos, make sure that, um, you know, even if they delay the order by a few days, well, now you have to arrange that with your freight forwarder. It's a very busy time of year for them as well. So don't just assume that, oh, if they said I've got shipment 15th of January, that it's going to go ahead. Make sure you check in with them daily or every other day to make sure everything's on schedule so it doesn't fall behind and then you get your goods after Chinese New Year. The other thing is uh, you definitely want to double check your capacity as well because the factory's capacity will be very, very different after Chinese New Year than it is during Chinese New Year. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit more detail uh, on the second point. But what I always like to do around this time of year, uh, right before Chinese New Year and the start of the year for us, is that I like to figure out what is my schedule, what is my forecast orders for next year. And I like to share that with the factory. So for example, if last year you ordered 10,000 units of your particular product and you've had about you know 50% growth, so you anticipate this year, okay, we're gonna order 15,000 units, I would share that information with your factory. 
So rather than sort of ordering two or 3,000 units every quarter, I would say to my factory, look, we forecast that we're going to have a 50% increase in growth this year because of you know, our uh, PPC strategy and growing our sales team and growing our marketing team, etc. So we forecast, remember, this is not a commitment, this is a forecast. We forecast that we're going to be ordering around 15,000 units next year. Can we go ahead uh, and order that amount or can you go ahead and order the raw materials for 15,000 units in advance so we can keep it in, in stock in your warehouse. So if you're using like a black cotton material, they're not cutting the material, they're not printing the material, but they're just ordering the fabric rolls and they're keeping it in stock. So that every three months when it comes to you ordering your three or 4,000 units, well, they just pull from, their, um, from what they have in their warehouse and storage, which cuts your lead time down because they, haven't, they don't have to go and prepare the raw materials again. And it also cuts your price down because now you're ordering 15,000 units at a time or the raw materials for 15,000 units at a time. Remember, the labor cost is probably the most expensive, expensive part of the production process, depending on what your product is. But if they're just ordering the raw material, they haven't actually started using any labor yet. So they'll most often be happy to sort of keep that in storage for you. And the other thing is, if it is a generic raw material, such as black polyester or black cotton, they know that if you don't take that order, then they can supply it to someone else later on down the line. But if you have some customized goldfish pattern that requires like, you know, your own design and stuff like that, they're less likely to do it for you because they know that if you don't take that stock, it's gonna be very hard for them to send that stock to someone else. So just bear in mind um, what sort of material you're using and how many years you've been working with that manufacturer is the more leverage that you have or how many orders you've given that manufacturer or if your orders have been significantly growing, then you have more leverage to give that forecast and ask them to hold those things in stock. And it also, um, prevents you getting hit by any future price increases as well because if they were to order those raw materials in Q2, in Q3, in Q4 in 2022, well if the price of that raw material were to go up you're not going to get affected by it because they ordered all your raw materials at once and that all starts from having a forecast order and sharing that forecast order with them either right before Chinese New Year or right after Chinese New Year so that when they get back to work on February 15th, they have a plan for the entire year. And remember, it's not a commitment, it's just a forecast and they'll definitely help support you in that. The other thing that forecast order really helps with is that they can also help you because they're going to give you their production schedule as well. So for example, I reached out to some of my factories about a month ago and said, these are the orders that I want to place. And then they said, well, actually, we're not going to be able to do that until May next year. I was like, wow, May, I didn't realize you're going to have a three month backlog after Chinese New Year. So the busy factories, depending on what category of product that you're in, might already have their orders booked for the next three months, which is why it's really good to get your forecast in now so you can basically anticipate, okay, well, who's gonna be ready and when? Because if I was to know like right now that my factory's not gonna be able to start production until May next year, well, now I've got time to go and find new factories if I have to, uh, if that is too long for me. So definitely give your schedule uh, right now. The other thing is that, um, Chinese New Year is the biggest people migration in the world. So there's over 100 million people which will be traveling outside of the factories to their hometowns, to different provinces, uh, all by high-speed rail. It's been crazy when I lived in China, uh, going to a train station around Chinese New Year. It's so chaotic. Everyone's just like packed like sardines. They're just moving like this. Uh, it's insane. And uh, I'll be really interested to see uh, what are the rules in terms of how many people they allow to travel, when they travel, how far you can travel uh, with the most recent restrictions. I have talked to some factories and they've told me about um, if you leave your province uh, that's to go home, that's fine. But if you come back uh, to a province from a different province, uh, then you have a two week isolation period. And that's what's going to affect uh, point number two, which I'm gonna get onto quickly, uh, well, quite soon. I'm not sure if you can tell what that is, uh, but we'll definitely cover that uh, very, very soon. The other thing that people always ask around Chinese New Year is uh, should I be sending a gift uh, to the factory? Should I be sending a gift? Uh, and if so, what type of gift? Well, the cool thing was that um, we had Christmas uh, before Chinese New Year. So let, what did your factory do for you? Did they send you an email? Did they send you a video? Did they send you an e-card? Did they actually send you a physical gift? And I normally like to match whatever they did for me. If they sent me a card, I'll send them a card back. If they sent me a gift, I'll send them a gift back. Uh, but if you only got an email, but you realize, okay, well, this is a supplier that I need to get to know better. This is a supplier I need to build a bit of leverage with, uh, then feel free to send a gift. And in terms of what gift you should be sending, I always like to send a gift which represents like my hometown. So I'm from Scotland and uh, when I used to go to travel to China when things were normal, I would always take 
uh, some bottles of whiskey uh, for the factory bosses because even if they don't drink whiskey I know that they appreciate it and I would even make some customized bottles for them as well depending on how much business I was doing uh, with that particular factory but you don't need to go to that extreme I would say that you know just send something that represents your hometown so if you're in uh, you know if your hometown is good for baseball or basketball or uh, American football whatever feel free to get them a t-shirt of your local team uh, or if your town is known for something like hot sauce and send them that hot sauce if your town is known for tea send them that tea you know that's something that uh, Chinese love tea so definitely something that represents your hometown because they have these customers for all from all over the world and that really excites them they now start to receive gifts from different parts of the world uh, so definitely uh, do that but what I would also say a little word of advice is use this as leverage to build a good relationship with the factory boss and what I mean by that is that if you are sending a gift to the sales assistant make sure you also include another gift and, and that will be for the boss and then this is a chance for the boss to get to know you if you don't know each other already so I would say, let's just say our sales assistant is called Cherry. I'd say, hey Cherry, um, I've got this gift for you for Chinese New Year, uh, but I've also got a gift for your boss. And do you mind if when you receive it, can you present the gift to your boss and take a photo and let him know it came from me? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, no problem. And why this is important is that, let's say we get the boss like this, this is like a Mickey Mouse LA Lakers t-shirt. Maybe we don't go for the Mickey Mouse, but let's go for the Lakers, right? So we send the boss this Lakers t-shirt. He's like, oh, wow, cool. Yeah, I love the Lakers. It's awesome. I'm going to wear this t-shirt when I play basketball. Awesome. So now let's fast forward six months. Uh, we're into June. We, uh, we place an order really late. We desperately need our shipment out within 45 days. Uh, it's not really going to happen because the factory's got a bit of a pr production backlog. And we say, to our, we say to Cherry, hey Cherry, can you please just push this order to the front of the production schedule? I really don't want to go out of stock. I'm desperate to get this order as fast as possible. Well, she can't make that decision. She needs to check with the boss. So she goes to the boss and she says, hey, um, you know, Kian's asking if uh, you, know, you can push this order to the front of the production schedule. And they're going to say, well, who, who's Kian again? Remember, Kian's the guy which got you the LA Lakers t-shirt uh, at Chinese New Year. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love that t-shirt. I always wear it. I always get good compliments from it. Yeah, that was a really nice gift from Kian. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, he's a nice guy. Cool, let's, let's do it. So you now have a sort of favor that you can ask for and the boss is going to remember who you are and they're going to associate you with that gift. So that's just something to bear in mind. I'm not saying bribe them. I'm not saying like send a really expensive bottle of wine or, or whiskey. Just send something memorable and then make sure you give one for, uh, to the boss and then you can use that in your, to your advantage uh, later on down the line as well. And the final thing I would say about Chinese New Year, and I'm just trying to give you guys all the hacks, all the tips, all the things that I've learned over the last like 12 years so you can apply it to your business today and make the most in January 2022. Uh, think about that one. Um, is also use this time to build a relationship. I'm not sure if you've seen much of my content before, but I always preach the importance of building a relationship with your manufacturer, and you can really do that at this time as well. So if you haven't already, make sure you download the app called WeChat on your phone, and WeChat is basically the Chinese messenger or the Chinese WhatsApp uh, platform, and you can start texting your supplier to say, hey, how was your Chinese New Year? What type of food do you guys eat? Did you go home? Uh, how did you guys celebrate? I heard there's like fireworks. Can you send me some photos and videos? Uh, it'd be cool to see like what the dinner table looks like. I'd love to see like, you know, what, what you guys are doing around this time. Um, here's me and my buddies. We're at the game this weekend. We're just having some beers. Da -da -da. This is my friends. If you ever get a chance to visit our place, like I'm going to show you around, all this sort of stuff. And now you start to build that connection. Now, it's always important to keep the important points of business like your delivery date, your price, all that sort of stuff to email uh, or to Alibaba and things like that. But in terms of like the informal conversations, let's start having those conversations on WeChat, let's start sending photos, let's start sending videos. And where this comes into play is that again, let's say fast forward six months, you got an order, uh, it's supposed to ship on you know May 25th and we're now at May 20th and we've not really heard anything but we've arranged the pre-shipment inspection. We can now get on WeChat and we can do a video call and we can say, hey Cherry, how's it going? Um, I know the goods are scheduled to ship in five days and the inspection's tomorrow. It'd be greatly appreciated if you could just go down to the factory and uh, just make a quick video for me. When we're on the call live, can you just go down, show me the inspection? I'd love to see what that looks like. Show me all the boxes, make sure that we've got all 200 cartons packed, that they're all labeled correctly. Can you just go down and, and can we do that together? Yeah, cool, no worries. Well, we have that ability now because we have that relationship that we built through WeChat that we started during Chinese New Year. So now is a great time to build that up because there's going to be times where we're going to need to use that later on down the year. Uh, so definitely make use of that as well. Okay, so point number two, and this is that dodgy drawing. I don't know if anyone can guess what this is. I, I'm actually so bad. Hopefully each month my drawings will start to get better, but I think I've actually gone back uh, since the last video. 
this, these three amigos are to represent the workforce, right? So I don't know why I put someone in a, a suit and tie, uh, someone with, in a tuxedo, and this one is not a basketball jersey, but it's a high-vis vest, right? Um, so, and these were all the colors I had to work with. So anyway, apologies. Why I show the workforce, and this is kind of like a continuation point from Chinese New Year, um, but it's such an important point that I had to make it a separate one, and it's very, very unique for this year. So in my 12 years of doing business and manufacturing in China, whenever I've had a quality issue with uh, production, it's always been around Chinese New Year. And that's either been right before Chinese New Year or right after Chinese New Year. And why that is, is that normally the workers are not from that province which they're working in. They go back to their hometown for that one month during Chinese New Year, and then they go back to that province to work. So they've been away from home for 11 months, and they're in such a rush to get back home that they know, okay, if we've got like four orders that we need to finish before Chinese New Year, they're now rushing those orders. They just want to make them as fast as possible, because as soon as we finish these orders, we get to go home. And it's very much that mentality. Um, so because they're rushing those orders, they're not taking as much care, and that's why production issues actually happen. And the same after Chinese New Year, and why I bring up the workforce is that normally, uh, depending on what category of product and what type of factory it is, but let's just say on average, it's only around 50 or 60% of the workers that they're able to retain from the previous year that they come back. So that means that they have to go out and find and employ another 40 to 50% of their workforce. Now, if you're in a backpack factory and then you've now employed someone new and they haven't been making backpacks before, then they have to be trained in order to make that product. They have to learn how to make that. So their, their first few orders will be making a bag for the first time. Now, their training methods are quite good and it's actually quite simple to do like straight line stitching and stuff like that. So normally it's okay, but I avoid this time if I can, if I can afford it, right? So if I'm desperate for the stock, I'll still place the order regardless, no matter what. But if I don't have to place an order, around January, February, March. I'll try to avoid that period for production if possible because that's also more expensive time for shipping because it's such a great rush um, to get your orders out. Now, a couple of really important things to consider here to prevent this, right? Always, 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 and you should be getting pre-shipment inspections anyway, but always get a pre-shipment inspection on any order that's going out right before or right after Chinese New Year. I think it's important to get it done all the times because you know mistakes can happen no matter how much trust you have in a factory. Things can just go wrong, which you didn't really anticipate for. Uh, but now is especially the most important time of year to do pre-shipment inspections. And if you need any recommendations for pre-shipment inspection companies that I use, just let me know in the comments below and uh, I'll share those uh, with you guys. The other thing to be aware of, or the other thing to ask is talk to your sales representative after Chinese New Year and ask them the question, uh, what percentage of your workforce returned after Chinese New Year? And they'll be a bit like, ooh, how did they know to ask that question? Uh, and that will catch them off guard a little bit, but they'll, they'll be, they should be happy to answer that question for you. And that's always good for you to know. And sometimes, you know, hopefully if they're, if they're honest with you, uh, you know, my factories have told me, oh, this year we only retained 40%, you know, this year we retained 60%. And it's just good for you to know have an understanding of you know how many employees are, were there last year versus um, the ones which are coming back this year. And then if it is a big number, then you might want to give a bit of time uh, before you place your next order, or if you have to place that order, as I said, just uh, place that pre-shipment inspection report. Now, as I said in the last point uh, about Chinese New Year, this year I've been talking about suppliers and they've been saying that there's that two week quarantine period uh, if you leave the province and come back to the province. So I'm watching that super closely and I'm super fascinated to, to find out after Chinese New Year if that number of work, if the percentage of workforce that returns decreases because um, with that, a lot of people might not want to do that two week isolation period. So they might find work in a different province that doesn't have that or they might just find work in their local province. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. And um, I'm going to keep you guys updated in the next video, which is going to be on the February uh, sourcing update. That'll come out beginning of February, so we might not have that information yet. But obviously, if we watch these videos every month, I'll keep you guys up to date on the sort of percentage of the workforce uh, that actually returns. So definitely keep an eye on that. Hey guys, let me know if you are getting value from this video, if you are liking these topics, if you are liking these points, if you are liking these sort of monthly sourcing updates, can I ask you guys a big favor? 
Uh, as I said, these videos are in partnership with Helium 10. It would not be possible without them. So if you wanna get more content like this, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell so you can be notified whenever we drop a new monthly sourcing update. And definitely subscribe to the Sourcing with Kian YouTube channel plus the Helium 10 YouTube channel. If there's any information you need from Helium 10, whether it be anything on their tools or courses, uh, I've got discounts for you guys in the description of the video down below if you want access to any of their tools as well. Thanks very much, and now let's get back to the next topic. Okay, so the third point, I uh, hope you can see that's MSC, that's a shipping line. I uh, hope you can tell this is an improved drawing from last month's uh, video. Hopefully you can notice the little container ships uh, on top of this vessel. But okay, for January 2021, let's cover some of the key points uh, to do with shipping. If you saw the supply chain summary video, you would have seen it was all doom and gloom in 2021, but not to fear, there are plenty of opportunities uh, in January 2022. So. Traditionally, when you ship around Chinese New Year, like you know, several years before uh, the whole pandemic situation, uh, it was always a very busy time and it was a, a very expensive time uh, to ship containers. However, what we might see, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out after Chinese New Year, is that the prices could actually drop after Chinese New Year. And you know, what we saw, you know, last year was the prices went up and then they dropped around October and then they went back up towards the end of the year uh, as there's that, you know, rush to get goods out, you know, before Chinese New Year. Now, the prices are quite high and I don't want to give exact quotes of what the shipping prices are because depending on when you're watching this video, the price might be different to what I've actually said. Um, I would recommend you know working with several different freight forwarders because capacity is the main issue. Different freight forwarders have got different levels of capacity. So every month, different freight forwarders are gonna give you different prices. And again, if you want any recommendations of freight forwarders that I work with, or if you wanna get prices from different freight forwarders, just let me know in the comments of this video below, and I'll share with you the contact information of the freight forwarders uh, that I work with. Now, um, going back to my point is that during this Chinese New Year period of that one month of the factories being closed, that's one month where we're not gonna get orders going back to the, uh, going to the ports in China. And then as a result, we're also gonna get those um, empty containers going back to China from the UK, from the US, from Europe, and all different parts of the world. So when China opens back up after Chinese New Year, they'll have a lot more containers, uh, therefore they'll have a lot more supply, um, so then the prices should actually drop. But it's also a very busy time of the year to ship goods out, so the two might cancel each other out, or we might see a price drop, but I'm definitely gonna keep a close uh, eye on that, but after Chinese New Year, hopefully we might see some price drops. Now the other thing is that if you're, just looking for speed you know we saw that there was a lot of like port pileups and stuff like that there's a shipping line called Matson M-A-T-S-O-N and they're actually uh, using smaller vessels so they avoid LA port and they actually go into Oakland and then they actually truck the containers you know from Oakland rather than from LA so if you're but they are more expensive for that and they'll, they'll get through a lot quicker so if you're more concerned about okay I just need my goods in fast versus you know paying the the lowest price for your shipment definitely check out Matson line and uh, the other thing is that Amazon are also they've been producing their own containers and they have their own shipping line as well I've not actually used Amazon shipping line myself, so I can't comment on it from my own experience, but I am talking to a lot of different sellers who are using them. So in the February update video, I'm gonna give you guys an update on what's, what are the pros and cons uh, of using the Amazon shipping line. Now, um, as I said, if in order to get the best shipping prices, I'd be talking to multiple freight forwarders, I'd be talking to several international freight forwarders, and also price compare against maybe a Chinese freight forwarder, but definitely go off a, a Chinese freight forwarder from a recommendation, not just someone who tags you on Facebook, because there's a lot of dodgy freight forwarding agents, uh, you know, who are just doing, uh, you know, some dodgy deals uh, on Facebook. So I would just go off uh, recommendations is what I would suggest. The other thing is that um, ask your supplier, uh, and this is something I've uh, had some good luck with uh, in the last year. If you find that the shipping costs are too high, now you don't want to import this product, or you're going to wait a little bit of time. If you have a good relationship with your supplier and if you've worked with them for several years, ask your supplier to split some of the freight costs with you. So if, um, let's say for example, your shipping cost for a container was $5,000 last year and now it's $15,000, well the increase is $10,000. So I would say to the supplier, look, this $10,000 increase in the shipping prices, and bear in mind your suppliers know fine well the increase in shipping costs, so this is not new uh, to them. I would say, look, the increase has been $10,000. I don't think we can ship this product anymore. It's far too expensive. The margins are too low. So because we can't ship this product, we're not gonna be able to order this from you anymore. So they're thinking, okay, we've lost this order from this customer. We've potentially lost a customer, we've lost this line. But it, in order for us to make this work, 
uh, it'd be great if we could work in partnership together and we could um, split this shipping cost 50-50. So that increase was $10,000. If you can contribute $5,000 to the shipping and we'll contribute the other $5,000, then we can continue to order this product, we can continue to ship this product, we can continue to sell this product, which means you continue to get orders. And depending on how long you've been doing business with that factory, they might give you the full 50%, the $5,000, or they might agree to maybe 30%, but that, hey, that $3,000 is better than nothing. Uh, but if this is your first or the second order with that manufacturer, you're very unlikely to get it, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, but just the longer you've been working with that factory, the more leverage you have uh, to ask in that situation. Now, the other thing you can do with your manufacturers is if you've ordered goods, you know, we talked about doing a forecast order. If you've got orders uh, in your supplier's warehouse or you've just placed an order for 10,000 units, you don't have to ship all of those goods while the cost is high. What you can do is just ship what you need for the next like two or three months. Like let's say just ship like 3,000 pieces and then ask your manufacturer to keep the remaining 7,000 pieces in storage in their factory free of charge. Now, most factories that I go to, they have pretty big warehouses, so they have space for your stock. Um, so they should just be able to hold it for you free of charge. And in that way, you can ship those remaining goods out once the freight cost uh, actually decreases. And the other thing is, um, it's really, really important. I think this whole like freight situation educated us all a lot more and much on a deeper level in terms of like uh, the freight forwarders, the shipping lines, the shipping terms, all that sort of stuff. And uh, I've made this PDF, which is just going to pop up on screen here. And these are the different INCO terms, your FOB, your XWorks, your DDP. I'm not going to go into detail on it now, but if you do want that PDF, which explains who pays for what and where the ownership changes hands or whatever, uh, just go to my website, sourcingwithkian.com, and there'll be a free download uh, to that PDF there. And you guys can use that and then get sort of more information. And there's loads of other PDFs and stuff like that uh, on the website if you want to check that out. Now, um, let me know in the comments below if you've had any sort of freight forwarders that you would recommend or any freight issues that you've had this month uh, or anything you want to, me to go over in the February video. Just write anything to do with freight or anything about any of these topics uh, in the comments below and I'm going to screenshot the best questions uh, and I'll answer the questions with the most likes on it and we'll cover those uh, in the next video. All right, okay, let's rally through these last uh, three points. You can see I've updated my image here uh, for the power outage situation. In the last video, I had this dodgy looking light bulb, uh, but now I've got a, a battery. So hopefully that, you know, gives you guys a little bit more of an insight of what we're gonna talk about. Um, so I'm gonna briefly touch on the power outage situation. It's not really so much of an issue anymore. However, the Chinese government did say that that situation could last uh, into March. And the reason why I bring it up in January is because it's one of the coldest months. So as a result of being in, in the winter times, so it might require a little bit more power. So we might see that there could be some power outage situations, uh, hopefully not, but just something to be aware of. Uh, and if that is the case, then make sure that you have backup suppliers lined up. And uh, if you don't know how to find backup suppliers, well, whenever you uh, requested or whenever you worked with your first manufacturer, I'm assuming that you asked two or three other manufacturers for prices and for samples. So you might have prices and samples from other manufacturers already. So at this point, I would check in with them to say, hey, uh, you know, I just wanted to double check the price that you sent before. Is it still valid? What's the latest price on these items, etc., etc. Just open up that conversation uh, just so if anything changes and you do need to work with one of those suppliers that you can see that you know uh, you can still work with them and that their pricing is, is where you want it to be, uh, etc. And if you do need help finding a manufacturer and having like a step-by-step -step guide and checklist, uh, the very first video I posted on this YouTube channel uh, was called Seven Alibaba Sourcing Hacks. So definitely watch that video. And in that video, I do a screen share, I jump onto Alibaba and I show you how to filter out all the bad suppliers and just go straight to the good ones. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out uh, on the channel. Now, the next point we have here, I'm not sure if you can even read that writing, but I've got three different, fab fab <laughs> I've got three different fabric rolls and it's uh, polyester, nylon uh, and cotton and this is to symbolize raw materials. And why I bring that up is that again, after Chinese New Year, uh, raw material prices can increase. And I wouldn't go and ask your manufacturers, hey, is the raw material price increased? But if your manufacturer comes back after Chinese New Year and says, oh, hey, the, you know, the, the, the price of steel has gone up or the price of polyester has gone up like 30%, therefore your product price is now gonna go up. Um, at, I would validate that increase in raw material cost before accepting it. And how to validate it? Again, if you've got those backup suppliers that we just talked about, uh, you can say to them, hey, um, you know, I, I, could you just tell me like, how has the price of steel changed in the last six months? Has it gone up? Has it gone down? Has it stayed the same? Or how's the price of steel uh, been affected after Chinese New Year? And just 
that one question and then they should be able to tell you, oh no, it's pretty stable or no, actually it's going down or actually, yeah, the price has been going up after Chinese New Year. And if your existing supplier tells you the raw material price has gone up and you've gone to two or three backup suppliers and you've asked them and they say, oh, it's also gone up, then that information is valid. Uh, you can also Google it as well, whatever the raw material is, like uh, lumbar, plastic, uh, cotton, polyester, prices in China, uh, 2022. And there should be some sort of graph or chart uh, from some organizations which display that information. So just before you accept anything, just validate that and get uh, more information from other suppliers or from, um, or from the internet, from valid sources. And the other thing is if you don't have those previous suppliers, just go on Alibaba, type in the name of your product, uh, contact the top three suppliers, and then just ask your normal questions, price, MOQ, all that sort of stuff, like, like you're pretending you want to place an order. And then at the end of it, just say, oh, and also, could you update me on the raw material situation of polyester since Chinese New Year? And then they'll just give you their one liner. But at least you're now coming from a place of knowledge uh, of that raw material. And in, in the last video, uh, the supply chain summary, I talked about having tier one and tier two suppliers, you know, your tier one being your actual factory and your tier two being your raw material supplier to that factory. And this is just so, so important to always be aware of what the situation is in terms of pricing and delivery date uh, of your tier two factories. And then if there is any change, your suppliers will let you know, uh, but it's just something to be very, very aware of. Now, finally, the last point, thanks very much for, for sticking with me to the end. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. And if you have enjoyed this video, I'd be greatly appreciative if you could just tickle that like button real quick and that will just show the world that you like this video and it will help us uh, with the algorithms and all that stuff. Um, right, okay, cool, last point, let's get into it. Uh, it's my dodgy earth drawing as well, which kind of looks like a little smiley face. Um, if you are looking to source from other countries, now, and we keep going back to this point, Chinese New Year, but you know, January, this is like the main topic, right? If you are looking to source from other parts of the world, now is the absolute best time to get those quotations and open up those conversations, because in this sort of uh, three to four week period, China is going to start to go quiet for a little while. So if you do want to get prices from different parts of the world, whether it be, you know, Turkey or Pakistan or Bangladesh or anywhere like that, uh, you can start to have those conversations now uh, while China is a bit quiet. Now, I would say there's three examples uh, of places we can go to because a lot of people say, well, okay, I've got this product, I'm doing these, uh, I'm doing these caps, uh, where, where should I get them manufactured? I normally get them from China, but you know, where, where do I start? Like, where, what countries do I look at? And um, I would say there's three main sources. I'm going to show you how to do it on a screen share. I'm going to jump in, grab the laptop. I'm going to do a screen share and show you on Alibaba how I would find suppliers from different countries. I'm going to show you another resource, uh, Import Yeti. Uh, where we're going to look at shipping documents uh, of, of our competitors. And then the final one I'll just cover now is uh, exhibitions. And, you know, let's say you have a cycling brand, uh, you can just type in uh, cycling trade show Europe and you'll find that there was a trade show in Germany. Whether they're going to exhibit this year or not because of the global situation, I'm not sure. But if they are going to exhibit, you can go on their website and you can go on the exhibitor list and they'll show you the suppliers and you can go on the previous year's websites as well and they'll show you the suppliers which have exhibited at that show and then you can contact them. And they're often a very good supplier if they've traveled all the way from whatever country that they're in, uh, whether it be China or Turkey or any other place, and they've gone to that trade show, it means they're a real specialist in that product. So definitely check out exhibitions in your town around the world, and then see, check the exhibitor list to find factories. Now let's grab the laptops, let's grab a coffee, and uh, we'll have a look at Alibaba and Import Yeti, and I'm gonna show you guys how I find factories from different parts of the world. Let's go. Yes, here we go guys. So on the screen share, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways on how we can find some manufacturers from other countries uh, outside of China. So first, let's take, for example, what I like to do is, uh, first of all, type the product name in and on Alibaba, it's going to show you. So let's go leather jacket uh, for men, for example, right? So we type this in and I'll just move myself over here. And if we scroll down, right, on the left hand side of the page, you can see the results from different countries. So we've got Bangladesh 135, India 136, Italy 304, but the main one is Pakistan. We have 25,000 results there, which is crazy. And China has only got 11,000. So we can see here Pakistan is a dominant country for leather jackets. So we should be sourcing from the countries which actually specialize in the raw materials of that particular product. And just by typing the product in, uh, we can see what countries pop up and Alibaba actually allows many different countries to come onto the platform as well. So 
you will be able to see a wide variety. Now let's take a, another product. Let's just say one that's some, that a lot of people do domestically, beauty cream for women, for example. And as we scroll here, as we scroll down, we can see here um, Bangladesh 2, China 2000, uh, Israel 17, Italy 75, Japan 63, Malaysia 14, South Korea 24, and if we go down as well, we've got United States 46. So Alibaba is actually allowing US suppliers onto the platform as well. And if you just select United States, you know, we could select Korea, we could select a lot of other different countries as well. But when we select United States, you can click on any supplier here and it'll tell you US supplier. Let's just go for this one, for example. Uh, we can see here the company information, just click there. And then through this, we should be able to see the other products that they do, face oil, sleep mask, um, moisturizer, and then you can find the contact details and get in touch with them. So look pretty cool, right? You can just type in the product that you're looking for, scroll, scroll down, go to the left side of the page, and you'll see the countries which you can get through Alibaba as well. Now, the other thing we can do is I use a website called Import Yeti, which is quite cool. And basically, any products which are shipped into the US, those shipping documents, the bill of lading is public information going into the US. So for we can actually find our competitors' uh, suppliers as long as they're shipping to the US. So let's take a brand that everyone knows. Let's just say the North Face. Uh, everyone knows this outdoor brand. So let's just hit search. Uh, and we'll click on the company. I'm just gonna go over this very quickly as well. If you have any further questions about this, just hit me up uh, in the comments down below. This one's taking a little bit longer to load probably because they have a lot of different uh, results for this. And let me just pause it while we're waiting. Okay, we're back. Right, so we've got information, North Face, this is the company. We can verify the address. We can see they've done 12, almost 13,000 C shipments. And then as we scroll down here, we can see month to month how many shipments they've done. Uh, so in December 2020, they did 24 shipments. In July 2019, they did 461 shipments. So they were very busy then. But anyway, these are all the suppliers that they have. And then they've also got the flag of the country next to them as well. And then here's a description of the product. So we can see here, where should I go? Uh, we, we can see here we've got uh, garments, we've got jackets. Uh, ready-made garments and uh, we'll probably see like you know backpacks and uh, so we've got jackets here you can see the majority of the products are clothing we've got footwear here uh, but those are the categories of product and then if you hover your mouse over that you can see here the HTS codes of those particular products we can see the number of shipments that they are doing we can see the countries so they're actually shipping from Guatemala El Salvador Vietnam uh, Hong Kong China Indonesia Vietnam, Bangladesh, a really wide variety of countries that they're importing from. So let's say, for example, uh, let's find a product here that we might be interested in. Uh, let's go for, what is this, bulk garments. Uh, let's go for this one, Cambodia. So men's polyester woven water resistant jacket. So we can click on this and now we have the supplier name and this is also going to tell us what other um, companies this supplier, like we can see all their shipments, how many shipments they've done. So they supply North Face, they supply Jansport, they supply Vans, uh, Fossil, loads of other brands here as well and you can scroll through that at your leisure. You can see the products that they specialize in, the number of shipments that they do per customer, really crazy information and this is all free as well. You can really dive deep into this. So that was just two resources we covered. We went over Alibaba, how to find the different countries um, that specialize in products outside of China. And then we can use Import Yeti as well to find all the manufacturers uh, of the market leader of your particular product as well. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that. And now let's get back to the video. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that um, screen share using Alibaba and Import Yeti. And I hope you enjoyed this episode so far. Uh, in regards to the supply chain January 2021 update. If you do have any questions, as I said, regarding any of these topics or anything else that you want me to cover uh, in supply chain, supply networks, uh, definitely pop your questions in the comments below. And as I said, I will take the top three, top five questions, we'll screenshot them. Uh, the ones who get the most likes on a comment will be like count as upvotes. And I'll answer those questions first uh, on the February episode. And then, um, 
And then, yeah, look forward to answering your questions live uh, on these videos, and then we'll get into the February uh, update. Thanks again to Helium 10 for allowing me to put this video out, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the February episode. If you haven't seen the Supply Chain Summary 2021, that's going to play right here, and if not, I'll see you in the February episode. Take care.